Hey there folks, are you ready to go beyond the length of your extension cord to increase your freedom, save a bundle on camping fees, and allow you to live more sustainably? By going solar in 2012, we've saved over $200,000 on camping fees as full-time RVers. This video is a quick tutorial on how to use our solar system sizing worksheet and is a complement to our Solar 101 video, which is a great place to start if you are brand new to solar power. Now we've been teaching audiences how to use this worksheet during our RV Solar 101 seminars at RV shows around the country and have now made this available to our YouTube audience. This worksheet will walk you through every step of the process from adding up your average daily watt hours to choosing the types of solar components you need to build out your system to pricing an off-grid system. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can see more of our videos about our solar powered RV road life. So let's get right into it. So step one is to go to our website, freedominacan.com, and you can use the link in the description below. And we'll show you how to download a free copy of this invaluable worksheet. From our homepage, click on resources, then find the RV Solar Tips and Resources page. You'll see a number of helpful resources on this page, including videos, installation advice, diagrams, and information about our own system but here is where you will download the worksheet. When you open the file, be sure you open it with Excel. Then click on this button here to enable editing. Otherwise, you won't be able to input any numbers on your spreadsheet. This worksheet is organized with one tab for each step in building out your own solar powered system. Here at the bottom, you'll see all of those tabs listed. The first tab is the welcome and instructions. The second tab is where you'll add up all the appliances you want to use with your own system. And we'll be spending the majority of our time today on this sheet and how to translate that to the right components for your system. Then you'll see a tab for different component options, solar panels, charge controllers, DC to DC chargers, batteries, inverters, and all the other pieces and parts that you might need to put all of this together wires, fuses, and whatnot. We've also included a learning center in each tab that helps you learn more about how to choose and size that particular component, as well as install it. Here we've got articles, blogs, videos, charts, and more to help you sort out what will work for you. The final tab helps you calculate your total order. This screen is automatically populated from the information you enter on the first seven tabs. Now, full disclosure, this worksheet is loaded with Renogy affiliate links. And if you choose to purchase gear from them, we get a small commission and you get 10% off with our promo code CANLIFE. This commission allows us to keep this information and our coaching services free to everyone. Back on the second tab, you will input the specs for all of the appliances you want to run in your off-grid RV or home. We've got sections of various appliance groupings that you might want or need, as well as some space to input something that isn't listed here. So let's take the first section of lighting, for example. We've got some LED light strips and they run on DC power at 12 volts. They use 0.8 amps and we might run them for about four and a half hours a day. When you input these numbers, the spreadsheet automatically calculates the watts and watt hours for you. Let's input another type of lighting. We have two LED bulbs that are plugged into traditional AC light sockets that are powered by our 12 volt inverter. All AC appliances will list their power consumption in terms of watts, so don't worry about including volts in this chart. Our light bulbs use eight watts. Since we have two of them, we're going to put 16 watts here. We only use these lights when cooking or when we need additional light over the dinette table, so we might use them for about three hours per day. So that's a total of 48 watt hours for these two bulbs. Now you can see here that the lighting section automatically tallied up our total watt hours for this section. Then down at the bottom, each section is added to our final total. You can see that your total daily watt hours are broken down into DC and AC watt hours. Let's go on to another category. We've got a ceiling fan in our kitchen that is just awesome. Definitely couldn't live without this thing. It's a 12 volt DC appliance, which uses 1.8 amps. That equals 21.6 watts. 
During the summer, we often run it all night long, so we'll choose eight hours, which is approximately 173 watt hours. Now this highlights an important point to consider when building out your system. How much you need will depend on how you're going to use your off-grid system. So up here in the lights, I might need to plan for winter when there's less daylight, but down here with the fan, I'm planning for the summer when I want to run it for longer periods of time. You want to build out a system that is robust enough to balance out these peak demands without overbuilding it at the same time. Taking the time to figure this out will save you a lot of money in the long run. Next are kitchen appliances. While we choose to only have one electric kitchen appliance, which is an immersion blender, other folks might want to run a coffee maker, microwave, etc. We simply don't have room for these in our camper, and we only run our blender every couple of weeks for about five minutes. While these are higher wattage appliances, you typically aren't going to use them for very long. They may not add too much to your total daily usage, but they will increase the size of your inverter, which we'll get into later. So let's say you use a 1500 watt microwave for 15 minutes per day. That adds up to 375 watt hours. You get the idea here. Since we work on the road, this next category is very important to us and amounts to our biggest draw. We have two laptops and there's a big difference between the two. The first uses only 65 watts. We charge this computer for about an hour and a half and then the laptop battery lasts for about eight hours. But our other laptop that we use for video editing is more graphic intensive, and it is a power hog. At 240 watts, it takes a lot of energy out of our battery bank. We don't use this computer wide open every day, so we're going to enter an average of about two hours. We also have Starlink Roam, which operates at about 60 watts. We use it for about five hours a day, since there isn't a category for satellite internet, I'll just rename one of these cells to fit our needs. Now remember, this worksheet is yours to alter. You might be thinking, where am I gonna get these numbers? Well, the best place is on the actual appliance. Laptops often have their wattage data on the charging cord. Other appliances have that information on the back or the bottom, while others might send you on a bit of a goose chase down an online rabbit hole. But it's always best if you can find the wattages of your own appliances. If you run out of resources and can't find this information, you can use this link that lists out some common RV appliances. But you'll note that there's a lot of variation here. Take coffee makers, for example. There's a wide range depending on whether you have a four cup style or a 10 cup style. So be sure to use the numbers that most closely match what you use. We know you're getting the idea here and we'll just input the rest of our appliances. It's a bit of work, but it will pay off in the end because you will have built a system that is designed for your energy needs. So right now you'll see we've got a total daily watt hours of 1,186. So this is the amount of energy that we need to try to collect and store in our batteries every day from the sun. If you can collect more than that, you'll be amp hours ahead for the next day. Now, when you've got this number, you're gonna go up here to the second link in the resources section, which will lead you to our favorite online solar component calculator provided by the Alt E store. Open this page, then enter your daily watt hour number into the first box for us. It's 1186. Now, days without much sunlight is going to affect your battery capacity. For the purposes of this example, let's stick to just one day. Temperature affects charging efficiency, but let's assume that we're traveling in the summer and that we'll only see the coldest temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Next is the system battery voltage. The most common type in RVs is 12 volts. Now there are good reasons why you might wanna go with a higher voltage system, and that's covered in these resources here back on the solar system sizing worksheet in the learning center. As for battery type, we'll choose lithium iron phosphate. Next is the amount of daylight hours per day. If you've got an off-grid setup that isn't going to move around, you can just input your zip code. This will give you the average daily hours of sunlight known as insulation. For the purposes of this example, we're going to choose five hours per day and hit the go button. 
each time you change anything here with your figures, you need to go back and make sure to click on the go button. Now that will give us the size of the battery bank we need, 144 amp hours, and have an array of about 365 watts. When we choose the size of the solar panels, we will get the last bit of information for our system. And for our purposes, we'll choose 100 watts. So this leaves us with four 100 watt solar panels, a 30 amp charge controller, and two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Let's quickly take a look at our system that we've used for many years. We have 300 watts of solar, a 40 amp charge controller, and two 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. But we have two components that help make up for our smaller than suggested solar array. Our MPPT charge controller is more efficient than a PWM, and we have a dual input DC to DC charger that allows us to charge our battery bank while driving. We'll discuss both of these a bit later. Overall, we have a small yet robust system that more than meets our energy needs. On the next tab, you'll have your solar panel options. And we've got some examples here and some links over here in the Learning Center so you can figure out what might be best for your setup. Now we have a vintage rig, so we choose to have a blend of solar panels. We wanted lightweight and low profile panels, so we have two 100 watt flexible panels on the roof of our tiny camper and a 100 watt portable solar suitcase on the ground for those days when we're in the shade, under trees, or when we just need a little bit of extra solar surface area. You can see we've got some links in here that lead you to Renogy products, and you can go ahead and enter the information about your panel right here. The prices of these products are constantly changing, so you'll have to enter this manually. It is not directly connected to the pricing on the website. But you can see that with the CanLife promo code, you will get an additional 10% off. Let's go back to our calculator for a second to see the size of charge controller that we need. It said we needed 30 amps. On this tab, you'll see different options for solar charge controllers. We still list PWM charge controllers, even though the industry is really moving away from these because the MPPT options are just so much more efficient. There's lots of information in the Learning Center about the differences and how to choose and appropriately size a solar charge controller for your system. Is this making sense? Let's move on. We highly recommend that folks consider adding a DC to DC charger so that you, like us, can charge while driving. This component is incredibly helpful when it's raining or when the sun is at a winter angle and you aren't able to collect as much from your panels. So this next tab is dedicated to taking advantage of that engine charging option. And there are some types of chargers that can take both a solar charge as well as an engine charge. Again, lots of information in the Learning Center for you to peruse and digest before making a selection. The calculator said that we needed 144 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. When you go back to the worksheet, you'll see that there are a bunch of options from Renogy here. We've got two smart lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour batteries with a self-heating function, and we love them. While we do list AGM and gel as options, we want to point out this article over here in the Learning Center, which compares the four types of deep cycle batteries in a side-by-side -side comparison. So be sure to give that a full read before you buy your batteries, especially if you plan to be off-grid full-time, have higher energy needs, or plan to keep your RV for a good long time. Inverters take DC power from the battery bank and transfer it to a usable AC power so we can plug in our household appliances. If you want to use your rig off-grid, you'll need to install an inverter. Most new RVs do not come equipped with an inverter. Instead, they have a converter. When your rig is plugged into an electrical outlet, known as shore power, converters use the AC power to charge the battery bank. Inverters do the exact opposite. There are also components that do the job of both the inverter and the converter, known as inverter chargers. To learn more about these options, check out this link in the Learning Center. Now with this component, there's a bit more gray area. While the calculator figures out how robust your other components need to be, you actually determine how much you want to run off of AC. When you go to this tab, you'll see that the worksheet has calculated your total AC watt hours as well as your total AC watts. 
this would be your total AC load if you were going to run all of these appliances at the same time. If we go back to the first worksheet, we can look at those appliances again and see what we want to be able to run together. We've got a total possible load of 1,436 watts. What we most often run together are the two laptops, our Starlink, and our two sconce lights. Adding these up, we get 381 watts, and we'll put that into this box here. However, we do have a small shop vac that uses about 550 watts, which we only really ever run by itself. So this single appliance is our largest possible load. To appropriately size an inverter, you need to multiply your largest possible load by 1.25 to have a 25% safety margin. And we get 688 watts. We need an inverter with a wattage output of at least this amount. So Renogy's 700 watt inverter meets our needs perfectly. Once you've figured out how big of an inverter you need, you can decide whether you want just a standard inverter or an inverter charger, which as a reminder, does the job of an inverter and a converter in the same component. If you're building out a rig from the ground up, you might want to consider this to cut down on the number of components that you need. And there are many reasons why you might want an inverter charger. You can explore these in the learning center, but remember the larger the inverter, the more energy it uses to power itself. And you are adding more weight to your total system. Again, it's a fine balance between what you want and what you need. Congratulations, we are at the final tab where you need to enter information. We included this page to help you plan out all those extra things that you will need as a part of your system. Wiring, fuses, terminal connections, fuse boxes, and everything else here will not be an insignificant part of your total budget it's a good idea to figure out how much these items will cost. Let's look at the wiring diagram for the system we put in back in 2021, which we've included as an example. You can see our diagram for how everything went together, and we have a video detailing this installation, and you guessed it, in our learning center. This example details out all the cables, fuses, and connections that we needed, as well as their 2021 prices. This should help you keep yourself organized. And lastly, the final tab helps you bring it all together so you can complete your order through the website. Be sure to double check your numbers here to make sure that everything has transferred over correctly. We've done our best to make this work seamlessly, but it's always good for you to double check. Now this worksheet is yours to use and share with whomever you please. We just ask that you credit freedom in a can if you're posting this on your own website or social media. We've made this resource free for all so that an appropriately sized solar powered system can be within reach for everyone. Please use our affiliate promo code CANLIFE at checkout. It will save you 10% on Renogy's website. We hope this was helpful to you. We'd love to hear your feedback and ways that we can make it better. Now don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a follow. Thanks so much, y'all, and we will see you on the road.